listen, this is getting way too complicated. The manager comes out and he's like, what do you want? I says, I'm cycling around the world. Ah, he says, I know. We have many of these bicycles in Guangdong, which is crazy, whatever. This is the last I'm gonna see of a uh, of bustling city for a little while, I think. Although Guangzhou is like one of the biggest cities in China, so I won't see this sort of bustle at all anymore in China. Guilin is big, but it's not this big. Getting out of the city is gonna be interesting. I think that I've gotta stay away from those um, apartment houses, especially like the really high-end ones. For, for the price, it wasn't that bad for this city, but golly, just they look down on you. I put my bike out in front and people were like staring at me like I shouldn't be there. I stayed in a really nice hotels hotels and they're always really excited because they see people coming and going all the time but these apartment complexes were sort of like hoity-toity like I live here what are you doing you scraggling traveler back on the road slept okay mosquitoes like crazy but uh, only get worse. One thing about riding in the city is that I have to be on my GPS like all the time. The moment I turn it off, I miss a turn. That spaghetti roads here, it, it's sort of crazy. And it sucks my battery down like, like nuts. Normally if I'm traveling long distances and I'm on a single road for a while, I can get off the GPS and I just, I know I'll be on this one road for like 20 or 30 kilometers or maybe the whole day even. Frustrating here. Oh boy. There have got to be more public restrooms available in, in China. I was so used to Japan and Korea and even Taiwan. I could go in and get uh, use the use the uh, cookie mart, the mini mart facilities. But here, no. <laughs> you got to find a park with the public restroom, which kind of gives me an interesting excuse to come to a park. Hello. <laughs> This is Steven. Yes. He's a, report, a reporter, right? Yes, yes. I'm a For, reporter from Guangzhou Daily. He saw me riding through the park and yes, he I, wants to have an interview. So yes. We'll be staying in Guangzhou a little longer. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'll see you at 1.30. Uh, 1.30? Yeah. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Okay. Nice to see you. I'll see you later. Okay. What do you want to do? <laughs> so we're here in Guangzhou a little longer. Parks in China become Sort of like retirement villages, activity centers, community centers, skill centers. People are practicing music and singing and playing and dancing and talking with their friends. I mean, it is uh, quite an experience to go to a big park in China, especially during like dusk and dawn. I'm a little bit late for it, but I, I bet at like eight o'clock in the morning, this place was full of people dancing. Like. Like, you can't move around full, you know? Just everybody with music doing Tai Chi or dancing or whatever. Oh, wow. Ni hao. Okay. 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 <laughs> These are surprisingly interesting. They have these badminton paddles and balls and they have to keep the ball on the badminton paddle as they're moving it around and dancing. It's very cool, very interesting. Oh, and you want to play? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay,
Go. My Hi, little everybody. bathroom break has turned out to be highly beneficial as far as experiences of friends go. Meeting these ladies riding around, making contacts, lots of pictures. Shush, a little bit. Can, can, can. Careful, careful. Okay, can you I want to see you do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Da, 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 da. They're going to put on a special performance just for, for us of the Jaya Nation. Good job, good job, good job. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I probably just had the most complicated discussion I've ever had. For no, no reason whatsoever. This is the Dongfeng Hotel. Maybe one of the bigger hotels in, in traditional hotels in, uh, in Guangdong, Guangzhou. So it's hoity-toity. But I just wanted to wait in their lobby drink some coffee and wait for my meeting. So I pull up to the front and I ask them, do you have anywhere where I can put the trike? Because I want to go inside and wait a couple of hours. I said it in Chinese and English. Who are you meeting with? I said, somebody from Guangdong Television. They want to interview me at 1.30, but I'm early. I don't have anything to do because I want to work on my computer. And then they said, uh, do you have a phone number for your, for your friend? We don't have a reservation for a meeting. I said, no, 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 no. I just, this was a meeting place. I want to meet in the lobby. Well, I need a phone number. I says, it's not important whether, you, I just want to know where I can put my trike. It's like, we don't have any reservations for your interview. I said, it's, we're just going to have coffee in your lobby. Well, I, I, do you have a phone number? I need to call this person. I says, listen, this is getting way too complicated. The manager comes out and he's like, what do you want? I says, I'm cycling around the world. Ah, he says, I know. We have many of these bicycles in Guangdong, which is crazy, whatever. So I told him, no, 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 I just want to have coffee and wait for my friend. He's coming at 1.30. Well, what's your reservation? I says, we need a reservation to sit down and have coffee with somebody? It's Guangdong television. Oh, I know, I know, I know. He says, you know, like, I love when they say, I know, I know. I do the same thing when I don't understand what somebody else is saying, though, so it's sort of hypocritical. But anyways, I'm like, no, no, no. This is really complicated. I want to sit inside and have a cup of coffee for a couple of hours while I wait for my meeting. I just want to know where I can put the trike. He never, never once said where I could put the trike. It was all focused on confirming this reservation. And he ended up calling my the guy who, he's like, give me the your WeChat for the guy that is going to interview me. And I says, why do you want to talk to him? So I, I left. Now I've got to find another place. I could have just sat in a lobby till he got here. Complicated. Now I've got to find a Starbucks or something. Hotel lobby. Just sit in your hotel lobby. I ended up uh, <laughs> going to a uh, Burger King <laughs> and setting up shop. I'm, I'm editing. And I put the trike out in front, and a guy from Singapore came in the door. He said, Are you Matt? He says, Yeah. Yeah, I'm your fan. Can I take a picture with you? That's pretty cool. He was from Singapore. I said, just wait a few months. I'll be in Singapore eventually. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Burger King's better than any. Better than you know. Actually, these actually these chairs here at Burger King are pretty comfortable. I could work Burger King into my potential 
um, uh, production studio list. Uh, I'm, I've still got an hour until my meeting. So, chillin', chillin'. Working, working. Beautiful. Very famous hotel, right? Uh, Very yes, old? Yes. Yeah. Uh, five star hotel. Okay. Five star, yes, yeah. Five star. Back at the hotel, I'm going to have my interview here with uh, Stephen. Yes, That's right. <laughs> so we're going to have an interview with Stephen at Guangdong Television. And then I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> this is a professional interviewing rig right here. <laughs> that is one way to do it. <laughs> Well, we just talked for the better part of two and a half hours. So much so that the day has slipped away and I'm still in Guangzhou. So we're gonna stay here one more day. Um, he actually invited me to his house to eat dinner with his family. He asked that I not include it in the vlog. So uh, that will be an experience that I will share and I'll just chalk it up for myself. It should be fun, it should be nice. He seems like a really nice guy. But uh, yeah, we talked about all sorts of things and uh, I think I inspired him a little bit. <laughs> He's asking me, oh, how can you do this? How can you da da da? It's very nice. Anyways, it was a great place to have a, a little talk. This, this hotel is very nice. But one of the things I was talking to him about was the fact that sometimes the higher the star of the hotel, the actual detriment to the experience you can have. I, it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for totally relaxed, you know, uh, self-pampering experience, then a very nice hotel will do the job. But if you're looking to meet people and have like these sort of connections, sometimes the hostels or the, the like the smaller venues can actually reveal quite a bit more. So, so I'm going to be staying at a place real close. It's on the path, so I'll be able to wake up and then just hit the road and keep going. It rained quite a bit, so I'm going to bring my chair and uh, anything that I can inside the room and see if I can dry everything up. It looks like the next few days are gonna be rainy, so uh, I might have to retool, get all my rain gear out and uh, jio it, but uh, not a big deal. I think it's just gonna be sprinkly. That's the plan. On a side note, at this hotel, when we came back, uh, they made me park my trike outside because I put it under the awning area, like way off in the corner. Security came out here, dragged us back out. He, uh, my friend had to go negotiate. We ended up putting it outside by a bus in the rain. So now it's soaked. Five star, huh? Not really five star hospitality, my friends. Next time on the Jio Vlog. Today I want to talk a little bit about why I feel comfortable riding on busy roads like this, how I've uh, adjusted to it, what techniques I might use, and uh, how I think it differs from riding in the Western world, like riding here in, uh, in China. 